Hello, I'm Andrea Dayrup, Professor of Pathology at Duke University School of Medicine and the course director for our Pathology Medical School course. I'm also a co-editor of Robbins Essential Pathology and of the upcoming edition of Robbins and Kumar Basic Pathology. And I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about the unique features of Robbins Essential Pathology that will help you to really engage and retain this material and to become the great physician we know you want to be. So we conceived of this book to give you what you asked of us. So many of you have let us know that you don't want just a textbook full of words to read, right? You don't want pages and pages of text. You want to engage with this material in an organic fashion, and you want to learn in the context of clinical care, in the context of patients. And so that is what you asked for, and that is what we have created. So let me show you how we do this. First, I'm going to put this in the context of the uh, Robbins family, just so you know where we came from and where we're going. So we have Robbins and Cotran pathologic basis disease, which is about 1,350 pages of text and images. In the middle, we have Robbins basic pathology, about 850 pages. And finally, we have Robbins essential pathology, which comes in at less than 350 pages. So how is this possible? Well, first, Let's just take a look at how the books stack up. So you can see here, I've put Robbins Essential Pathology just on top of Pathologic Basis of Disease, and we have a book that's about this thick compared to one that's about that thick. How do we do that? How do we give you what it is you need to know so that you can become great physicians and do it in such a small space? And the secret is we have a lot of online materials that will help you to engage with, with the information. And we are really focused on the essentials, but this book is going to open up like an accordion when you go online. So let's take a look at what Robbins Essential Pathology is, and then I will show you how it works online. Okay, so this is what Robbins Essential Pathology is. It's a concise text focused on the essential entities and mechanisms. We're focusing on the common entities and the me mechanisms that will help you to understand broad principles of health and disease. In order to give you the clinical context you wanted, we have more than 80 clinical cases with questions, explanations, images, and a unique feature we call hot spotting. Now, I like to engage with material, and I learn a lot better sometimes in the context of testing myself. So we have more than 600 USMLE-style multiple-choice questions with explanations that are really quite detailed. So this is not just a simple thing like, well, it's not that gene. We go into the pathophysiology because as you've engaged with this question in a clinical vignette, if you're not getting the correct answer, we want to be sure we go through detailed pathophysiology so you can see where you're going astray and you can maintain and retain that, that uh, information. Now, pathology is a very visual science, and so we want to have images to help you really visualize what it is we're describing. So we have more than 400 clinical, radiologic, gross, and histologic images in the print textbook. But once more, as I've told you, this book is going to expand online. So we actually have more than 300 supplemental images in the uh, electronic book. Now let's take a look at that electronic book. So here what you see is my student consult page. When you buy the textbook, there will be a code. Uh, you, you enter that into the student consult website, and you'll get a library that you get to keep forever. Right? So you can access it from your iPhone, uh, from your uh, iPad, from your computer, anywhere you want to. It's right there with you. All right, so let's see what happens when we click on Essential Pathology. Let me cone this down. What you'll see uh, when you first open is going to be an index on the left, which is going to show you uh, we have multiple choice questions, we have case studies, and then we have the text of the book. Now, I have it set here on the case studies. And just as an aside, when we put these case studies together, previous uh, editions of, of cases that I've looked at generally have titles like a 43-year-old man with colon cancer, which is not all that interesting. So we tried to come up with something a little whimsical, which may even help you when you're retaining the information. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of these cases. Now, before I get too engaged in the case, I want to show you how to uh, navigate the screen. So we have here uh, the, the title of the case, 
right here. We have a number that will help you find it when you're looking at your index. And you'll notice here we have uh, a menu frame here. We have something going on here. And then we have uh, your navigation with arrows. All right, so let's see what we have here. So say if you click on this, you will get just a brief map of this particular case, which tells you the, which screens there are, so the different questions. Now this can be useful if you remember in some of the longer cases, oh, I always have trouble with question number 10, and you can flip back to that. So that's just a way to, to navigate back and forth. The other thing that you'll be doing as a clinician and as you're taking things like eh, board exams is you'll be looking at uh, the clinical uh, laboratory tests for your patients or the patient in the vignette. And you need to get good at, at flipping back and forth between looking at your patient's values and at reference values. So we've included uh, a, a table here which will show you the different uh, reference ranges. And this is a, a, a skill that you'll be using when you take your board exams because you'll be uh, flipping back and forth. They have this uh, feature in the boards as well. So you can see here, this uh, when you click on this, it pops up on hematology tests, but you can also click here and you can say, oh, I'm interested in chemistry, and there are your values. So that goes ahead and, and shows you that. And then you click on it again and it closes. Now you can advance uh, through the case by uh, using the arrow here. And as we move, you'll see that, let me move this up, you'll see that a second arrow here appears here, so you can go back and forth. And these uh, dots here along the bottom just show you how far along you are in the case. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, begin by looking at our objectives. And the goal here is for you to know what you'll have learned by the time you get to the end of this case. All right, so this is what we want you to learn. Now, each case is going to begin with a clinical vignette. So here we see uh, an example. Uh, this is a fairly simple case because it's uh, early on in uh, chapter one. And the focus here is going to be on metaplasia. So you can see we have a clinical vignette and you probably notice that there are some uh, areas here that have hot links to them. Uh, so we see the word uh, squamous is in blue, glandular, and goblet cells. Now the reason we do this is because if you look at this image, which I as a pathologist am able to easily recognize the different features, you may be reading this and seeing something where it says bio, uh, biopsy specimens were taken and showed squamous and glandular mucosa. And it may be a few months or even a year since your histology course, and you may be thinking, oh gosh, I don't remember what squamous mucosa and what glandular mucosa are supposed to look like. So what you can do is you can simply click on the word squamous and it's going to highlight, which you can see here, we have this highlighted here. If I click on glandular, once more we have highlighting across here, this hot spotting, and then goblet cells. So if we click on goblet cells, it's going to show you here, these are the goblet cells. This is the mucin. Now there's another way to access that, and that is I can simply go here to the drop down menu and I can find, I want to see squamous. It's going to highlight squamous. I want to highlight glandular. It will highlight glandular. So this gives you a way to test yourself. So you can read it without the hot spotting. So you can look at it and say, okay, I think I remember what goblet cells look like. I've identified them. Now I want to test myself. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And yes, I'm right. So this gives you the opportunity to really see. It's like having a pathologist sitting right next to you saying, yes, you're right. That is the goblet cell. Now, each of these uh, slides is going to have a question that comes with it. So we want you to think about this in the context of this patient case, right? When you're actually treating a patient, you may be moving too quickly thinking about how to treat, what are the symptoms, what does this mean, what test do I order? So we want you to take this time now to really focus on the pathophysiology because that's going to help you to become the excellent physician that you want to be. So here's the question, what is the significance of the goblet cells? So then you can think to yourself, you can answer the question, and then you can see if you're correct. You put show answer, and here you're going to see a detailed description of the pathophysiology. Now some of this is going to mirror what there is in the textbook, some of it is an expansion. But it's going to put this information in the context of this patient in this vignette. And so it will help you to cement it all together and to build context. So that's how the cases are designed. Now let's look at some more of the features. So as you can see, we, in this particular case, we have one histologic image with a bunch of different features in it. But some of our cases are going to have 
more than one image. So this is one from uh, the Neoplasia chapter. Uh, the case is called Tropic of Cancer, and it's focused on melanoma. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. All right, so this is looking at the clinical image uh, of this patient's lesion, uh, and then we look at some of the histology as well. So one of the things you'll notice here is that there are three thumbnails. This one's highlighted in orange because that's the one that we're looking at. If I move over to this one, this one will be highlighted in orange and will show us that this is the one that we're looking at. And you'll notice that as we switch from one thumbnail to the next, the menu will change, right? So here it says histology, low power. If I switch to this one, it will say clinical appearance. And if I switch to this one, histology, higher power. Now, the benefit of this is that it will enable you to work your way through the case. So as we look at the clinical image, right, there really isn't going to be anything in the drop down because we can see what there is to see. But as we look here at the histology low power, we can see the nests of cells highlighted here for you now with our hot spotting. And then if you read in the text, it tells you about the macrophages that are engulfing melanin pigments surrounding the nests. So as we go here, we can highlight the melanophages and you can see there's a black line that pops up around these cells here. So it's showing you that. So this is just a way to show you how to navigate through the different thumbnails. Now, I want to show you two more features of our online materials. One is going to be the test questions. So let us, let's see, go to a question here. My apologies, the, uh, the print is a little bit light, uh, but it does show up well uh, on your computer. So here you can have a question, it's a USMLE style, and you can see we have a clinical vignette uh, and we have a series of five uh, potential answers. So you'll go through this and you have a couple of possibilities. Say you look at this and you think, uh, I have absolutely no idea what the answer could possibly be, right? So the answer to that, you can just say, I, I just, I don't know. Please just show answer. And it will say the answer here is D and here is Y. So you're going to have a detailed description here of why the pathophysiology uh, is correct for this particular uh, answer choice. And it will also go through in detail why the other answers are incorrect, okay? So now that you've done that, you're like, okay, now I've got it. I wanna try again. So now you read through it and you say, okay, I think it's, I think it's gonna be uh, decreased stability of uh, DNA repair proteins. And you check answer, and it says, ah, not quite. So you think, okay, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do it again. All right, so you can try again, and you go with functional inactivation, and it says, yes, you're correct. And we'll actually uh, keep track for you uh, here on the number that you have correct, uh, and the number that you get wrong, and the number that aren't answered. So it gives you the opportunity uh, to check on yourself and see your progress. So those are the multiple choice questions, and as I said, there are more than 600 of them. Great for board review. Now the final thing that I want to share with you uh, about uh, the online materials is the, uh, the e-figures. So uh, here we have um, renal cell carcinoma, and as we're working our way through, you can see here, we mentioned here's this figure for renal cell carcinoma, that's excellent. But then we see here we're talking about another tumor, which is uh, papillary uh, renal cell carcinoma. So these papillary tumors uh, are something that are much less common than renal cell carcinoma. So we didn't really want to take up the extra space in the slim textbook to put in excess images, but we do want you to see it in the ebook. And so here you can see it's a supplemental e-figure. It won't say that in the print textbook, just on the online one. And then as you move up, there you can see there is the image, supplemental e-figure. And if you click on this, it's going to bring up not only the image, but will bring up uh, the, uh, the figure legend as well. And my apologies, my internet is a little bit slow this morning. All right, so that brings us to 
uh, this, the, the final slide. I just want to say thank you. I really hope you like this book. We put a lot of love, a lot of attention, trying to give you what it is that you want because we want you to learn the material in the way that suits you, in the way that you can retain it, in the way you can carry this forward to become the best physician that you can be. So thank you very much.